Hi, Joe O'Connell, Sandpiper Pump. Today we're going to show you how to put a wet end kit into our S15 non-metallic. Out front here, we've got examples of our Sandpiper genuine parts, wet end kit, air end kit, Sitting on the bench with our S15, we've got an S20 non-metallic. The rebuild you're going to see is accurate in man, method, and machine, but for video purposes, some parts of the work performed have been condensed in time. At any point during this presentation, please pause this video until you've completed any phase of the process. Identifying which kit is required for your repair has become easier on newer pumps with the permanently affixed metal serial number tag that now indicates the wet end and air end kit information for the pump. Kit information can also be found in the service and operating manual. Sandpiper Genuine Replacement Parts, Wet End and Airing Kits provide a bill of material of the components included in the kit. All items included in the kits are components that Sandpiper recommends replacing when rebuilding a pump. The pump we are using today is an example of the ease of kit installation. Always consult your respective service and operating manual before performing any maintenance on your pump. Service and operating manuals include composite repair parts drawings, repair parts list, and torque specifications. For service and operating manuals or more information, visit us on the web at www.sandpiperpump.com. Always remember that safety is the highest priority. When working on or around any equipment, always follow the correct safety procedures. Always read and follow the safety warnings and instructions in the service manual before any work is started on the pump. For more information, see the Warren Rupp video on safety at sandpiperpump.com. The pump we are using in this presentation has been built new and is considerably easier to work with than a pump that has been used in a process. Additional time may be required in the preparation and separation of parts and components during the rebuild. While the pumps are different in size and flow, the techniques and procedures used in the rebuild of the S15 non-metallic are also applied to the commonality of the S20 non-metallic. These are the recommended tools used with the rebuild. While the sizes may change based on the model, the type will remain the same. Torque wrench, ratchet, small slotted screwdriver, O-ring pick, 12 inch pry bars, snap ring pliers, sockets and or wrenches, 1 half inch, 9 16 inch, 5 8 inch, 1 and 5 16 inch 6 point socket, 3 16 inch socket head Allen wrench, 5 16 inch socket head allen wrench. Our wet end kit install is going to include diaphragms, check balls, and seals. So let's get started. For video purposes, ease of assembly and disassembly, we're going to use a 3 8 inch electric impact gun. So we're going to go ahead and start by taking off this discharge manifold assembly right here. Once you get the bolts loosened from the manifold assembly, you can take the manifold assembly off the pump and set it aside. Take the check valve assembly seals, you can discard those. You want to remove the check valve assemblies. Take the assembly apart and discard the check ball. It may be a little stuck, you may need pliers to pull those out. Reach inside the chambers and you want to remove the innermost check valve assembly seals. And then flip the unit over. And you want to remove the suction side manifold assembly. Loosen all the bolts. Once you get all the bolts loosened, you can set the manifold assembly aside. Remove the check valve assembly seals and the check valve assemblies. Remove the check ball from the assembly and discard it. Do this for both sides. Next you want to reach inside the chamber and remove the innermost check valve assembly seals. Now 
Next, we're gonna remove the main air valve assembly. Loosen the four socket head cap screws. Take the assembly, set it aside. Remove one outer chamber. Loosen all the bolts and set the outer chamber aside. Next, we're gonna remove the diaphragm assembly. Remember to use a six point socket here. This is a plastic outer plate. You don't wanna damage that hex head on the plastic outer plate. Once you loosen the assembly, you may get the diaphragm rod. Take your bumper, set it aside. Now you can remove the opposite outer chamber. Loosen all the bolts and set the chamber aside. Remove the diaphragm assembly. In this case, the rod came out with the assembly. Next, we're gonna go ahead and open up our wetting kit, lay those components out and get them ready for our installation into our pump. Next, we're gonna remove the diaphragm assembly from the diaphragm rod. Today, we are using a vise with soft jaws. Soft jaws are utilized to ensure that the shaft is not scarred, scratched, or damaged while it's clamped in the vise. Clamp the diaphragm rod into the vise with the soft jaws and loosen the assembly from the rod. Remember this is a plastic outer plate. You wanna use a six point socket. You don't wanna damage the hex head on that outer plate. Once you unthread that, you wanna set the bumper aside. Next, inspect the diaphragm rod. Make sure there's no sharp edges, deep scratches or grooves in the diaphragm rod. Take your soft jaws out, and we wanna clamp one of the diaphragm assemblies into the vise. You wanna clamp the inner plate into the vise, ensuring that you grab hold of the lower part of the inner plate and not the radius of the plate. Using our six point socket, we wanna go ahead and unloosen the outer diaphragm plate from the assembly. Once you get that loosened, you can throw the old diaphragm away, and you can repeat the process on the other assembly. Maybe a little easier to invert the diaphragm so you can clamp hold of the inner plate. Ensuring that you clamp hold of the lower portion of the inner plate and not the radius. Discard your old diaphragm. Before reassembling the assembly, you want to inspect the inner and outer plates. Ensure the plates have no sharp edges or scarring on the radius. Plates can be cleaned up with emery paper, crocus cloth, or fine sandpaper. Make sure the radius is maintained during cleanup. Replace if necessary. Now we want to reassemble our diaphragm assembly. Take one of the inner plates and clamp it in the vise, ensuring that you clamp to the lower portion of the inner plate. Flat face needs to go up. Take our diaphragm. Diaphragm has a natural bulge. The natural bulge is the wetted portion. The opposite side of the natural bulge is the air side. You may wanna invert the diaphragm so that you can get the air side of the diaphragm against the flat face of the inner plate. Get the face against the inner plate. Then you can thread in your outer diaphragm plate. Once you get the diaphragm plate, thread it on, you want to torque it to the specifications that are called out in this service and operating manual. You want to repeat this process for the opposite assembly. Remember that the diaphragm has a natural bulge. The natural bulge is the wetted side of the pump. It will face out. Importantly, you have to ensure that you torque the assembly to the manufacturer's recommendations called out in the service and operating manual. Next, we take our diaphragm rod, clamp it back in the vise, ensuring that we're using soft jaws, and we'll thread on one of the diaphragm assemblies. Make sure you put the bumper on first, then thread the diaphragm assembly onto the diaphragm rod. And you wanna to torque this to the diaphragm rod.
Take the diaphragm assembly out, apply a little grease to the rod. You also want to apply a little grease to the U-cup seal and the intermediate bore. You can slide the assembly with the diaphragm rod into the bore now. You want to make sure that you get the diaphragm seated into the groove in the inner chamber. Now we can reinstall one of our outer chambers. You want to inspect the outer chamber. Inspect the machine faces and radius of the chamber for damage or material buildup. Scarring scratches or material buildup can be cleaned up by using memory paper, crocus cloth, or fine sandpaper. Replace the chamber if necessary. On this pump, there is no suction or discharge side to the outer chamber. You want to ensure though that you align the outer chamber with the nameplate. Go ahead and install your nuts and bolts. Once you have those installed, you want to tighten the bolts down in a crossing pattern to the torque specifications that are called out in the service and operating manual. Flip the unit over. Install the bumper. Now we can install our second diaphragm assembly. With the diaphragm inverted on the assembly, you can go ahead and thread it to the diaphragm rod. Then we want to take a couple of pry bars and you want to pry the assembly across. Make sure you get underneath the inner plate and not underneath the diaphragm. You can damage the diaphragm. You can invert the diaphragm back into the groove. You have to make sure you get the diaphragm seated in the groove. And you can install the second outer chamber. Remember to inspect the outer chamber. Remember there is no suction or discharge side of the outer chamber. You just have to ensure that you have the porting aligned with the nameplate. Install your nuts and bolts. You want to tighten those down in a crossing pattern and torque to the specifications called out in the service and operating manual. Next we're going to install our check valve assemblies. You want to start with the suction side. Nameplate is always on the discharge side of the pump. Take our check valve assemblies, remove one of the ends of the check valve assembly, and install your check ball. You want to do this for all four assemblies. Seal has a flat face and a V wedge face. The flat face in this position has to go down. The V wedge goes up. You want to make sure you get both of those in. Take two of our check valve assemblies and install them on the suction side. There are two sides to the assembly, a retainer side and a seat side. For installation with the unit on the suction side, you need to make sure that the retainer face of the assembly goes in first. Install both check valve assemblies, then you can take your new seals, again, the seal has a V wedge and a flat face. The V wedge goes against the check valve assembly. Flat face goes up here. Next, we want to take the elbows off of our manifold on our manifold assembly and replace the seals. Move the bolts, take the elbow off and you can discard the seal. Install the new seal. Has no up or down face. Can go either way. Inspect the manifold. Reinstall the bolts. You want to do this for both sides. Once you have the assembly rebuilt, 
Go ahead and put the manifold assembly onto the pump. Orientation of the manifold is based on process requirements and may be reinstalled in either direction. Put your bolts in. You can tighten all the bolts in a crossing pattern across all eight bolts and torque them to the specifications called out in the service and operating manual. There will be a gap between the outer chamber flange and the elbow flange. This is okay. The unit is sealing against the seals on the check valve assembly. With the unit flipped over, we can now install our check valve assembly seal. Your check valve assemblies. With the pump sitting upright, you want to make sure that you install the check valve assembly with the seat face first. Take our seals, we'll install those next. We can replace our seals inside our manifold assembly. Once you get the seals replaced, set the manifold assembly on top of the pump. Orientation of the manifold is based on process requirements and may be reinstalled in either direction. You want to put your bolts in, you want to tighten them in a crossing pattern and torque them to the manufacturer's specifications called out in the service and operating manual. Plastic pump, you may want to go back and just check and retorque all the components. Now we want to install our main air valve assembly. You must ensure that you line up the pilot valve porting holes in the gasket to the main air valve in the intermediate. Once you get the bolts threaded in, you can go ahead and torque those in a crossing pattern to the manufacturer's specifications called out in the service and operating manual. That completes our wet side rebuild of our S15 non-metallic. If you're doing a complete rebuild, you may also want to see our air side video, or for additional information, you can find us on the web at sandpiperpump.com or Contact after sales support at service.warnerup at idexcorp.com. Thanks.